Hello and welcome to the All Reviews Podcast. This is episode 2. Today we have Pokemon news, a fair bit of Nintendo news, games coming out. A main topic is we're talking about Splatoon 2, doing a review and discussion, uh, and also some Overwatch news. I have with me my special guest, uh, Georgia. Hello. Are you excited to be here? Yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us something fascinating about yourself. I'm a piece of trash. There you have it. There's the new scoop for the week. Georgia is a piece of trash. I'm Maine Widowmaker. <laughs> I was about to make that joke, but you roasted yourself. Roast myself. What's what you said before? You're not only a widow Widowmaker main, you're also a Mercy main. So the double salt. Trash. Double trash. Double trash salt.com. Yeah, that's it. That's my life. <laughs> All right. Get, in, get into some news now. Talk about, talk about some games. Yeah. All right, let's do it. First up, we have some Pokemon news. A new form for Lycanroc, Pokemon introduced in Pokemon Sun and Moon, is getting a new form called Dust Form. Uh, the only way to get it is by getting Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon, the sequel games coming out uh, in November. And if you get them within a period, you can go online and get that Pokemon as a bonus. Which Honestly, will be fun. I couldn't give two fucks. It doesn't <laughs> motivate me to get this game anymore. And it doesn't, like... I don't just I don't understand why they're trying to like see make this out to be something appealing because it's not. It's a new form of a Pokemon that already exists on both games. Well, exactly. The only thing we know about this game is that it's like on a different timeline, and the three Pokemon we've seen so far are all just different forms. Then it's nothing new. I know. It's so like what's why? The point in getting it. Hundred percent. I mean, I feel like. With Pokemon, the, it sort of stays quiet, and then all at once it's like, here's 50 new Pokemon, the whole Pokedex leaked, da-da-da-da-da. But, like, so far, I mean, I really like Pokemon, so I will get it and I will play it, but at this point I'm just like, I don't know why. I just, I hope it, I hope it's like Black and White too. I mean, it, that's what it's doing here. It's a sequel game, and those games were better than Black and White in my opinion, but... But yeah, I don't... This will have to do something really different for me to sort of go, this is good. Like, I'm probably just going to play it because I need to do... I have a live deck, so it's going to have holes. Just... I don't know. Um, I can't say whether I'll get it or not. Yeah. What What would it have... Before the game come out, what would it have to show you for you to go, okay, I'll get this release day or release week? That it's not going to be the same as Moon was. It was a tedious game to play. It took way too long. And, like, don't even get me started on the fucking tutorial, because I'll rant for the Tutorial entire... Island? I just rant for the whole podcast. It, like, <laughs> takes four hours plus to finish. And it's stupid. I'm done. I don't, I don't <laughs> I'm know. I'm done. If I have to go through that again, I will return the game. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you returning this game? I had to do the fucking Tutorial Island. <laughs> I'm I'm with you. I just again like I'm I'm just as I'm trying to be optimistic and just be like if, so, if something will come up before there'll be like mega revelations will be back or maybe there'll be gyms. I mean the thing I'm still duped about is that in Sun and Moon there's a whole bunch of places that you can't go to the power plant places that are being built and I thought there was going to be DLC but no they're making you buy a whole new game and it's like okay you get you sort of gave me an unfinished game. I mean, hinting at a game by not giving you some of a game, like, you know. Yeah, that's what they did in Black and White. Yeah, that is true, but Black and White 2 really did, like, you start in a whole new area. There's whole there's whole new gyms, there's whole new areas. The post story for that is massive. Like, there's a lot of stuff in that game. Um, I don't know. I Obviously, it's too soon to sort of talk about it, um, and this is all... We, it, it, it's, it is all speculation at this point. Maybe they blow us out of the water. Maybe it's, you know, it's a whole different part of the Alolan region, maybe, and this and that, but I, I doubt it. Yeah. I can't see them in this short amount of time, because this game was made alongside Sun and Moon. It was made at the same time, and they stopped production on it to, to finish Sun and Moon. So it can't be anything, you know, yeah. earth-shattering. Yeah. Um, but I guess we'll wait and see, and we'll, we'll add, I'll, I'll get you back to comment on it after there's maybe some trailers or, or stuff. Yeah. I mean, we should see something soon. I mean, it's... What's it, September now? When are we doing this? August, it's August now. <laughs> You're getting a little ahead of yourself. Where am I? There, buddy. Um, August now. Um, 
game comes out in November, so there's only a couple of months. So, yeah, we'll, yeah. Yeah. we'll see. Uh, there'll be a big info dump probably next month. I mean, we've already had E3. There is Tokyo Game Show coming up, so maybe something there, as it is, you know, sort of more based. Don't know. Don't really care. <laughs> Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon need to just, like, get buried in with all the other, like, dead Pokemon games that they fucked up and shouldn't have released. Like, I know a lot of people actually do care about Sun and Moon and they did actually enjoy the game, but, like, for me, Pokemon is about three things. A, gameplay, which hasn't changed at all. It introduced... Well, that's why they got rid of gyms to try. The moves right? Yeah. But... It's nowhere near as interesting as Mega Evolution. Nope. Um, B, the Pokemon. Yep. And there's like three Pokemon that they added this generation that I actually enjoy. And most of them are just forms of old Pokemon, the Alolan forms that is redone. Yeah. And they're not even good. They only added like something like 50 Pokemon. They added way less than they usually do because yep. they had all these... Alolan forms and they changed types around and shit. Like, that's not enough to make a game. Mm. I'm sorry. B, I play Pokemon because I... This might sound a little childish, but I genuinely enjoy going through the stories they come up with. It's interesting. It's interesting to see how storylines play out in the world and with the villains. And quite frankly, it was really uncaptivating. Like, I enjoyed the story, but it was so long and so tedious. Like, while it was happening, I was enjoying it. But afterwards, looking back on it, I don't want to go through a similar experience because it just was too long and all the cutscenes were very tedious. Yeah, well, that was the only good thing about the game was the story. And the ending of that story, like, me and you were in tears. Yeah. Like, we were like, whoa. That's because the one good character (laughs) in the fucking game left. Spoilers. (laughs) But, but like, you were left with all the other characters you gave zero fucks about. The villain... (laughs) And the one good oh, character yep. on your side who you actually learn to give a what shit about, about your rival? Grew an attachment to. Your rival who wasn't left. your rival. Your rival was not even a fucking rival. Who he was so just fucking chill the entire game. And he took the Pokemon he, that was, was weak never, that wasn't weak to yours. He was never competitive against you. Nope. He was never like actually upset when he lost to you and then nope. when he when he did lose he never seemed to have any actual motivation nope. to get better from that i did all previous rivals actually felt like a rival because you felt like they were co- you were competing with them well, one yeah. of my favorite rivals of all time mm. was barry in the game or, in, in diamond Shino, and yeah. pearl because you were always like i remember getting there and checking the statue and getting really shitty if he'd already been to that gym he was always there he's like Thud, you ran into me. I'm going to find you. <laughs> Battle me now. I know. Like, that was always a, an aspect I really enjoyed. And it was, like, a great part of the game. But with this, there was no rival. And it really took away from the story and experience, in my opinion. Because the rival just wasn't a rival. He was just chilling the entire time. And was like, you're my rival. But then didn't actually act like it. Yeah. See, I... I... Like, Lily yeah. was more competitive yeah, yeah, than she anyone. Was. And she didn't, you know, I love, I do love when your rival, like, says goodbye to Lily and he goes to sort of confess his feelings and Lily knows that's happening. She's like, bye! Just gets on the boat and leaves. She's like, I'm not dealing with this. See, when the game ended, and so, okay, you should have finished it by now. The Sun and Moon ends with Lily leaving to Kanto. And I was getting excited because I thought, like, post-game you'd be able to go to Kanto. <laughs> And when that didn't happen, I was like, oh, cool. So we're just, there's nothing else to this game. Like, there's no, there's hard, there's no, like, Battle Frontier. There's no, there's hardly any post-game stuff, really. There's some stuff with getting the Ultra Beasts, and you see Looker again, which is really cool, and Looker's great. That was, but that was good, and it was good fun, but it was really, really short post-story 100%. in comparison to other post-stories. Especially the last, like, even Black and White, Black and White 2, you know, like, since... Since probably Gen 3, the post story has been like a you know a big part, especially in Auras when they had the um, it's a Delta episode, yeah, and there's a whole other thing, and you see Deoxys, like that goes on, and then there's all this other stuff. Yeah. But I don't know, the Sun and Moon was like, yeah, you finished it, cool. I mean, the only reason I like yeah, Sun and Moon, you finished it, now go battle on this tree. Yeah. There's, yeah. I mean, red and blue are there, that's what you want, it's right? It's the only reason anyone gave a shit, but the only reason I kept playing was because I do have a live decks and I needed. 
those Pokemon because I couldn't sleep unless they were sitting in my, po- you know, in my bank with my other Pokemon. Yeah. Um, competitively, the competitive game just went down. I wasn't interested in that. Um, you went from, I'm going to build a team to, no, no fuck this. Everything in that game just made me sad. I completed the po- the whole Pokedex in that when I didn't need to, because I've already completed the decks a thousand times over. Um, and But I just did it, and I finished Moon as well, and that really fatigued me from Pokemon. Like, I haven't re- I only recently started playing Pokemon again. I was playing Pokemon Go with you the other day, and th- I had a lot of fun with that, just because I got to see Pokemon again, and I forgot that Pokemon could be a good experience, because Sun and Moon tired me out. Like, it was just so... Even just playing Moon was exhausting. Like, I would... Like, you don't... Like, when we were, like, here going through all the speculation for what, like, Pokemon um, stars stars would be, everyone was saying, oh, it'll be a third game. And you and I were just like, fuck that noise. We don't want to play that fucking game again. I was not going to buy it if it was going to be a third game. You were, like, really annoyed because you had to play it for your deck. Yeah, and I've already played it but, twice. <laughs> yeah. Twice. And you were so fatigued with it. Yeah. Like, unless they do a dramatic change in it, I think I will just lose all motivation to actually finish the game and end up returning it. It's, yeah. it's well, yeah. not... <laughs> See, I, wouldn't re- I, would, I will buy it and keep it just for the to get Pokemon, but I guess for you, like, you don't really... You play it because you, in, you enjoy it for the story and that, so if the story's not compelling and there's just nothing new, you'd be like, why am I keeping this? Exactly. And, like, I don't know, even playing it alongside my friends didn't improve the experience, you know? No. Like, what you... <laughs> all us and the guys, all of us and the guys, we all they like, won. started... Yeah. Games. Yeah. Gen 4. And that was so much fun going through that and like seeing. Where are you up to? Yeah. And like going into the underground yeah. together. That was so fun. And it was like a genuinely good experience. Yeah. But with Moon, even just playing. Well, yeah, playing playing that again, I was like, oh, Pokemon can be fun. Like I, it's it's the first Pokemon game I played in a while that I wasn't playing for the Pokemon, like like getting them. I was yeah. playing it for the story, for the interaction with you, my friends, and it, and it was good. So I was like. That's why when the announcement came for Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon, I was like, I can deal with the third game, but I'm not going to be happy. Having two new games, I was literally, you heard me, I threw my headset down in anger and had to go away yeah. for like half an hour because I was so mad. I love Pokemon so much and just, I feel like it just stabbed me in the back and it just hurt. Like, I know I'm getting angry about a kid's game, but it it's something special to me. It's what, it, what's ma- it, it, it makes me me. And it's what I do to unwind. So to have it just completely go one direction. And I've told you've heard this a thousand times, but Pokemon, it was going downwards with black and white. That's where I was like, you know, I was like, I'm just not interested I, in this. I, I did enjoy black and white. I think part of what off put you was because they didn't really change a lot in the second game and you didn't have a lot of motivation yeah. to actually See, get through it. Black and white and two is okay. Black and white one I really was like that's why I liked black and white two, because they fixed but their you mistakes. Also had, like, issues with the anime with black and white. I did. But th- that's I the wasn't thing for me. I involved in the anime. I played black and white and I was really I really yeah. loved it because they introduced seasons and they made all these forms mm. and I thought it was really really cool. And then they made it even better with a sequel. Mm. Which is hard to do because usually sequels are kind of worse, let's be real. But they brought back characters and it was exactly. really fun. You got to relive an experience that was improved. But also get to know the characters that were in the previous game and i don't know it was just we we can agree that pokemon diamond and pearl was the pinnacle for anime and games yeah it was the only anime i like actually watched i mean because diamond and pearl as standalone games are really good um and then platinum is like one of my favorite all-time pokemon games yeah because i my favorite all-time pokemon game is pokemon emerald um because that it is also the game i started on but just in terms of like Battle Frontier and gyms and pe- like it, the third game's always been my favorite. So I usually, you know, I haven't really always. I just, I I'm getting mad at like them having extra games, but Emerald and Platinum did it right, and it felt like a new well, game. Whereas and Black and White Two was sort the of a one game. extra game, and then though that one extra game tied the other two separate entities together. together really well, and they added to it in a very sort of 
subtle but meaningful way, mm. and they added some cool new bits and pieces. Mm. Like, I had no idea you could get like a little room in the resort yeah, yeah. in Platinum, but you can't do that in Diamond and Pearl. It also and I means that was really cool. it also means if you don't want to play Diamond and Pearl, you can play one or the other, and then Platinum, so you can play yeah. two games or three. Obviously, I played all three. Um, but if you're someone like you, then you only have to play two to get the other, like, Pelkey or Dialga, the one you missed out on. Um, but, the, the, and as, as I was saying before, you've heard me say this a thousand times, but Pokemon was in this great direction, and then around Black and White, the anime and everything kind of fell down, and Black and White reset Ash's character in the anime, and everything was awful, and, like, and we talk about rivals. Paul in the anime was an amazing character. He, like, was just, Ash has this thing of being friends with everyone. Paul's the one person who's like, I'm not having that. And legitimately, it's just like, no. And he was the, he's like opposite Ash. He has a different style of training. He has a different attitude. And Ash, like, they both don't mix well. And then it leads to this great conclusion at the league where they battle. And Ash has battled Paul mm, maybe 10 or 12 times. He never won once. And Paul always criticized him. And then in the league, to get into the um, semifinals, he beats Paul. And then Paul has this resolution of, like, I, I like, and they have this mutual respect, and they shake hands, and they become friends, and it's this great thing. It's and not. Then Ash proceeds to lose. He gets him. okay. <laughs> we're gonna divert. Ash gets to the semifinals. He versus this guy, and he has a dark cry. Oh, R.I.P. Ash. Hey. And and so, but Ash uses all his Pokemon to defeat this dark cry. He Ash defeats a dark cry, a legendary Pokemon using just normal ass Pokemon, and then he. I mean, this... to be fair though, we do that in every game. Yeah, but this is the anime, and, like, if you watch the movies, legendaries are, like, they pretty much, they can only go down by know, the hands of other like, legendaries. But, you understand, like, as, like, a, someone who watched, like, one season of the anime ever, and, like, yeah. maybe two or three of the movies. Oh, no, I've watched more of the movies. You've watched most of the movies with you me. You <laughs> um, But, you know, as someone who's only watched, like, the movies and one season of the anime, you can, and who has played, like, every game since Diamond and yeah. Pearl. You can understand why defeating a Legendary is yeah. kind of unimpressive. This is the thing. In the in the anime, like, Legendary takes on a whole new stance. Like, it's yeah. not even, like, there's only, like, one or a couple of them. Like, they are, like, fierce Pokemon. Like, so to have one... And the thing is, I'm like, Ash has seen every Legendary Pokemon, and he's been around, and I was like, how does this guy just... It, breaked all, it broke the whole, like, if there's a canon of Pokemon, which there really isn't. It just broke. It's like, you're not meant to catch Legendaries. How did he catch it? Because there's the movie, Diamond and Pearl movie, with Darkrai, and he keeps the balance between the worlds of Diagram and Pelka, and there's this whole thing. So for him to catch that, if it's well, that, if it's, a, it's like, well, it just doesn't make sense. It breaks the whole... Darkrai doesn't keep that balance in that movie, though. Darkrai just kind of, like, kinda, like <laughs> fucks him up at the end, being like, y'all need stop to stop. waking me up. He's, because, like, Darkrai came to be from, like, the nightmares of people in Pokemon, right? Yeah. Like, that's his, like, law. Yeah, so Darkrai, multiple Darkrai can exist. I just, I feel like, I feel like also he shouldn't have been allowed in that tournament. Like, no, I don't know. No, it because, just... like, legendaries are banned from every game. Yeah. Like, See, we're allowed to use them in the Elite Four, but, like, in the Battle Frontier and other things, you can't use them, but I don't know. Exactly, and you can't use them in, like, competitive Pokemon. No. So I don't understand why yeah, they made it exactly. in Pokemon. So... With the exception of the tapus, yeah, yeah, and some well, and more, some and more last competitive, competitive season you could use g ground and stuff, but that yeah. was the first time ever, and you can't do that now. Exactly. But it was but specifically like back in Diamond yes, and Pearl. Yes, hundred percent. No, you can't use any legendaries. No. no, no, nah, fuck you. So you know, but but Ash beats his Darkrai, and then his next Pokemon is a Latias, and at you can, and I literally, I remember what? watching, and I remember watching this going, you got to be fucking shitting me. You gotta be, and and then Latias beat and kills Pikachu. Of course. And then even though you know Pikachu has a type advantage with the flying, but Pikachu gets wrecked and then Ash loses, and and Ash is just like, okay. I remember watching this. So like, did the writers just not know how to beat Ash? Like, you know what we should do? We should just make him miserable. And that's you know the what best. What we should do? What should we do? Make it seem as if the player in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. With all the fucking legendaries they can garner, went into the Elite Four and had to burst Ash. <laughs> I just... So my, my thing is, like, that's the best Ash ever came. Because in the Indigo Plateau, he did pretty badly. But that's because his Pokemon got injured fighting Team Rocket before the battle. So half his Pokemon were fucking injured. Yeah. Um, and he came, like, top... He came, like... Mm, was it top... 
top 20 or something. I don't even know. He didn't do that well. Then he came... Jodo Lega came top 16th. And then Hoenn, top 8. And then Shino, he was 3rd. And then Black and White, he was, like, top 8 again. They comp- The league for Black and White is awful. Like, they just fuck out. This guy with a team of all Eevees wins. Um, and then, and then X and Y, he gets to the finals, which was, and this still breaks my heart, is the first time Ash has made it to the finals, he was in the finals against Alan, he had a Mega Charizard, Ash had his Mega Great Ninja, which is, like, an anomaly of its own, and we purely- We should really bring it back to the game. This is why Pokemon, I am sad about Pokemon anime. Basically, Ash loses to a Fire type when he has a Mega Water type, and it's sad. Anyways, that was, um- we that was a twenty minute discussion on Pokemon from a new form of Lycanroc Rock that we got. We, Basically, yeah. Basically, we are not happy about Ultra Sun and Moon. <laughs> we, I think and we, we, unless it actually proves itself to be act- an actual like decent experience, we're going to continue to be unhappy with Ultra Sun. Stay and Moon. tuned for next week's uh, Pokey Talk. Uh, <laughs> Just give me Diamond and Pearl remake. I mean, that's what I guessed. I mean, there is a, and we can touch on this briefly. Um, they they are making a Pokemon Switch game. Which I said is either going to be, um, you know, is going to be a new Pokemon game on the Switch and 3DS, or will be Diamond and Pearl remakes. I yeah, feel it's I either or. I feel like they do a Switch Pokemon game and not make it a new gen. Yeah. That's. I nice. just I don't know. I feel like I mean they did have a new gen straight after Black and White too. That's when X and Y came out. So it's not it's doable. But I feel like I kind of don't want a new gen just yet. I'd rather go back to Diamond and Pearl. And on the Switch would be even better. I mean I'm only going back to my 3DS next month for Samus Returns. But apart from that, I never touch my DS now because if I want to play, well, I it's got Sun you know, and Moon is shit. And no one yeah. pe- no one plays it beyond. And apart the apart from Fire Emblem, there's nothing else. Fucking like, oh, and Pikmin came out, but yeah, fuck, so what's Pikmin? Cool. Let's maintain, and we're going to keep it's literally, maintaining oh, and releasing no, games for the 3DS. The, three, the 3DS is literally Pokemon Fire Emblem. That's all it is. You can tell me otherwise, but that's why they did Samus Returns. Cause like, oh, ne- we'll get people to play this thing. I was like, yeah, that's the only reason I'm picking it up. Anyways, we'll move on for this topic. We can come we can come back to this at another day. Um, so we'll move on to our next story. It is Nintendo-related as well. Um, it is about a lawsuit. Game Device, uh, a company, filed a lawsuit against Nintendo because the design of their latest system, um, the Android gaming tablet, the Wikipad, which, you know, Wikipedia should sue them, um, the accessory company, believes Nintendo violated a patent about the... Uh, along, fuck me. Uh, <laughs> about um, the Switch's controllers and believes they're too similar to what they had in mind for their portable device. Which... I think it's just ridiculous because they're. You can look it up. It's called the Wiki Pad. It basically looks like a worse version of the Wii U gamepad. If you can imagine that, I is, is just horrible. And basically, you just take the screen out of this um, dock that connects this sort of these controllers together. It's nothing like the Joy Cons. They're not two pull standalone controllers. So this whole thing with the D pad and other accessories and it's used for android gaming it looks nothing like it they claim nintendo infringed on the patent but the pattern would be different because nintendo made two standalone joy cons with vibration functions for other things it wasn't made for this sort of you know other docking thing it's a different type um but i just i just <laughs> again what i said to you before this podcast it's like it's nintendo like good luck with their lawyers like i don't know what's gonna happen here yeah i mean i don't I don't know. What did you did you think anything about it? Uh, I think it's a dumbass lawsuit, obviously, because Nintendo is usually pretty great at covering their tracks. But I do kind of see where they're coming from, because like how these guys sort of have how they wanted to start out anyway is by effectively making what was what is the Switch. They wanted to, and I don't know if they have the patent or the um, copyright for it or not. But they wanted to make a gaming tablet that had the same capabilities of the Switch, you know, yeah. on the go and then you dock it and yeah. do all that thing. Yeah. Um, but it's still like a gaming tablet. It wasn't fucking yeah. like a console. It is. It is an. It is an Android gaming tablet. And instead of having um, the Switch where it has controllers on the side, it's a big ass yeah, dock with where it yeah, slides they into. Ju- they just wanted like they wanted like features like Colossus Crew 3D. 3D, not 3D. Sorry. 3D, free me. How, how can you talk? talk Don't blame me. me. Um, 
and they wanted to have game streaming on it, but it didn't work out. They had too many delays, and they mm. just, I think they didn't have the funds to make it happen. So they kind of changed the direction that company was going in to ex- gaming accessories for tablets and Android. Um, but you can't kind of go, this is what we wanted to do. And you but copied we didn't me. Do it. It, it, we didn't do it. You copied me. And, like, I know the they, the lawsuit is for the Joy-Cons, all right? Yes. What they are saying it's similar to um, is their little, like... The docking station for the kind tablet. Of, it's kind of a dock. Well, because, because what I, I'm calling it's like, it a dock. It's, it's, like, two... It's got, like, it's one thing. It's not two separate exactly. controllers. It's all connected. It's not, That's what I mean. They're not two separate controllers that can be used separately. They don't have separate, like, uses. You couldn't use one without using the other. They're all yeah. connect. They're both connected by, like, a, a, <laughs> yeah. a well, plastic thing. The, the Joy-Cons are a controller it, in its own. And then you put it onto your tablet, and then you game as if... <laughs> and it has a similar kind of look to, like, the Wii U gamepad does. Exactly. Um, <laughs> it's basically like they looked at the Wii U gamepad and they're like, what if this was like on the go? It's basically what Nintendo did with their Switch, but they obviously did it a lot better. But the Joy-Cons themselves function as a controller each. When did the Wii U come out? Uh, 2012. Okay, it's the same year as they were trying to do their thing. Okay, well, Nintendo obviously filed their, their thing for that before. I feel like this is... and. As I was saying, um, Samsung and Apple have this thing where Apple came out with the iPod and have touchscreen technologies, and Samsung went, "Oh, we own touchscreen technology, and you stole it from us with our, I, you know, our Samsung Galaxy." And they went to a lawsuit, and Apple were like, mm, "Go home." I just feel like it's another company trying to get, you know, look at someone's success and be like, "We thought of this," where their products just, you know, their product j- just isn't good, and not that that justifies anything of, of quality, but it. it it just seems, and and the lawsuit as well. They want them to stop selling Nintendo Switches. That's not happening. That's not happening. Um, so I, I just feel like it's a bit silly. So I feel like maybe they they did have an idea for this Android gaming thing, but they've obviously been, you know, influenced by the Wii U and the Switch, and then you know tried to sort of be like, oh, we did that when it's obviously not true. Because Nintendo have always, you know, been the ones like with the Wii, it was motion controls, and they were the first gaming company to really do that and then sony had the playstation move and um xbox had connect but they were different devices so you know it's not that one company can have one idea and then it's their idea forever obviously you can make iterations of things like we have different brands of tvs or computers like you can make additions but this literally is a company sort this, of just copying this it. is the pattern uh am i reading the abstract or i don't know you can do like you can i mean oh. it's like it's a long thing. It's a, it's a pattern, but Claim. it's du, 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 du. publication date. Fi- filing is that the filing date? Is that when they launched the pattern? Patent. All right. Priority date is that? Publishing I don't know date. Enough about looking at patents. I don't usually bother with looking at patents and all. Well, on. that's so it's. Like, it just to me pat- when a company files a patent. And it's used in like gaming rumors or whatever. It's just feeding into stuff. Exactly. If that makes sense. Like it's, it, it's pointless to look at it because it might not even well, happen. Well, I if know. If a company files a patent, doesn't mean it'll happen. It just means they want to keep the idea so, safe. So Pokemon, um, they launched a patent for Pokemon Delta Emerald. That game never came out, but they they, they, copyrighted, they copyrighted it, it in case. Same with Pokemon Z. Same with Pokemon Grey. Those all exist and are and all like owned Pokemon by Nintendo. Brown. Yeah, Pokemon, they're all for every color you can think of. Nintendo owns, so if you say a color, you owe them twenty dollars. Um, <laughs> but look up, look up the Switch patent date because that will tell you something. Because I know their patents were going around since like two thousand fifteen. Because there was a re- that original leak. I don't know if you remember, but there was that leak of the Switch where the controller was like like egg shaped device. Yeah. And basically, it had an inbuilt analog stick on the screen, and it was this touch screen. So basically, imagine the Switch, but it's oval shaped and it's got inbuilt analog sticks on the touch screen. That's yeah. the original patent leak that came out. But I just did air quotes for an audio show. Um, <laughs> and I'm not sure why. Um, why did you? I don't know. But 
Yeah, I, I really think uh, neither Nintendo or this company have commented sent with the story, so I will update next week on what happened. But I, I imagine this uh, Nintendo's lawyers will be on this and they will they will come up. Yeah. Georgia is looking at patents. I'm trying to, find, I'm trying to find the Switch patent, but they, they, they filed like... They filed a lot of patents for the Switch. Oh, definitely. I had a lot of directions they wanted to go with it. Well, obviously, they have to cover their butts for what they do decide to do, but I know they filed one for the tablet itself, the Joy-Cons themselves, the docking unit, and the thing of between the two docking and, and handhelds. Because I remember that in yeah. early... La- oh, end of... I can't remember. It was sometime last year before the Switch came out. Because um, we didn't really know much about the Switch until like there was the presentation um so you know getting that yeah okay so this is not this is a not an uncommon thing for nintendo though how no. many times did people try to do this with the wii 100 well, percent. that's like, what i'm they saying they just see something successful and go i'm gonna make a shitload of money off of that I'm because saying. i had an, I- an idea that's kind of similar to that like the switch patent doesn't actually violate the game by patent at all no, it's a completely different device that does different things. And that's no, what I'm saying. It's not, it's not a controller. Like, sorry, it's Shh. not a controller. It's not a console. What they make, what they have a patent for is an Android device that can stream games, do 3D, and maybe play down- games that it can download. Yeah. But it's still, you know, it's classi- it'd be ca- classified as an Android exactly. computing tablet. Well, it can't, it can't it can play... Have a t- it can have controllers... That attach to it. And Whereas the Switch is console gaming. Yeah, the you, Switch you, is a console, yeah. and it's got very different technology, and it's got very different, you know, yeah. and it just works differently. I don't know how to put this into words because I'm I sick can, as fuck. But I can understand it, what you're saying. They're two very different things, and if they think that they can just go ahead and make all this money, this off of this, Nintendo's this device pat- looks off of like Nintendo's awful. success again, because this happened weeks yeah. ago. Well, it's not surprising exactly. that, it ha- that it's happening again. And it, yeah, Basically, they, they just want to make a shitload of money because they can see where the money is. 100%. They can see an opportunity, so they want to, you know... The, wi- the wiki pad looks like a failed Fisher-Price toy yeah. um, that and can't like, play look, anything. They waited for it to do well, too, because yeah. the Nintendo Switch has been announced for a long time, and it's been talked about But we didn't know what it could do. It was called the time. NX until March I know. this year. <laughs> March is when. Oh no, hang on. When it did released oh, it in March. The, Hang on. Yeah. When? No. What yeah. What are you talking about? I'm. I'm get, When was the event? Was um November ish. Yeah, like it. There's been a lot of news around for a while. Remember yeah. the Switch got a name before we had the Switch conference. Oh yes, it did. It had that snazzy ad with the upbeat song and the guy in the park. Yeah. It's a dub, but feel good. Yeah. And Karen, yeah. Karen going to yeah. parties. Karen! The Switch has been known for a yeah. very long time. They could have filed a lawsuit at any time, but they waited for it to be successful and do well exactly. so they could, like, sue for damages exactly. and sue for more the money. Trailer, the trailer shows the what success. it does. The trailer shows what exactly. it does. Exactly. And it's been talk- so talked about that there's no way that they haven't, hadn't heard of it before now. But like, they waited what, what are the... for the success of it because that no one knew whether it would do well so, until after it released. I'm not, I'm not right? sure what the... Because of the Wii U's I'm not, flop. I'm not sure what the legal things are about like filing for a lawsuit and, and like getting it because obviously this came this came through about a day ago. So yeah. God knows how long it's been, you know, in the thing, you know, in the can for. Um, yeah. But yeah. Okay, story, story, coming the story to an end. Um, no, but it can't have been in there for more than a few months. No. They, they, they again, have... they would have heard that in opening week, it, this would have been, you know, April at the earliest. Well, you can't get a Switch in America still. I'm t- Japan's yeah. I'm still surprised. having, like, lines. I was surprised I was able to get a new Switch a couple of weeks ago. Like, Fortunately, Australia have some. Yeah, Australia is, like, probably the only place that doesn't have a shortage. Which is, which is, um, usually it's the other way around. No, but Japan has had a lot of struggles with people getting Switches. Like, the Switch is the equivalent. Okay, imagine, like, the lines that you used to see for getting iPhones. Yeah. That's what pe- it looks like in Japan for people lining up to get a Switch. Well, Japan is where gaming like, is, so it makes sense. It's been crazy, though, because they have such shortages that they have to give people raffle tickets and they call out numbers to see who can actually I would, in and buy I would one. have a goddamn heart attack. 
Like, that it's not even like a first come, first serve system. It's a, you draw in the right number, good. The, only, the only time I've had to line up for gaming themes, and this has been in the last sort of two years, is one, I had to line up to get a silver Mario Amiibo at six in the morning at Target. And I had to line up to get um, my um, NES Wasn't Classic. Was gold? Cla- uh, no, EB... Oh, yes, it was gold, sorry. EB Games was silver, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but yeah, no, I... And I just felt really ridiculous lining up for an Amiibo. And then the NES Classic, like, that's more understandable, because it's, like, of short stock. But I've never really had that thing of, I need this console. Like, anytime I... Like, I remember buying my Wii U, there were six people on launch day for it. Like, that was before that's people knew it was going to... But people... Though. This was before we knew it was going to suck. Like, I that's went high... No I was so happy for the Wii U. I would, like... But I no walked in... They shot such a good marketing for the Wii U. Like, it would have been substantially more successful if they hadn't, like, ma- na- named it something so confusing. People well, thought it was an add-on they to wanted the Wii. to. They wanted to coast off the success of the Wii. That's yeah. what they tried to do, but they just fucked up. Yeah, they did fuck up. My anyway, my thing is, let's, what let's if get back on track a little bit? Yes, thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad you're here. Um, but yeah, f- like closing that story. The wiki pad, it's also it has no legs to stand on, and I imagine the next week Nintendo will stomp that before it even gets to court, or maybe just pay out the settlement so it goes away. Yeah, one or the either two, one. either one. But they want a ridiculous settlement. Oh yeah, well the thing is, they don't just want money. They want them to stop selling the and it, no, that's not how things work. So. It's it's a bit ridiculous. It is a little bit. Hold on. Let me see if I can find exactly what they're asking for. I believe. Um. But the the quote I have is that with viol- they violated Nintendo violated a patent and that the Switch's detachable Joy Con controllers were too close to what Game Device had in mind for the portable device. But had in mind? That's not that's like me going up to the guy who invented no, but they, Google. They have a that's the thing. It's the mm. patent that was violated, um, that they're claiming was violated, and that mm. it, and whether the patent is actually been violated or not comes down to a court decision. Yeah. At the end of the day. Um, but it, they are two separate things, though. That is the thing. So the pa- I can't see unless they Nintendo. They are different, but that's the thing. Is it different enough? Yeah. I that's believe in term they... in terms of functionality. I believe it's there. As in. As, as, as what I said before, is that the Switch, each, the individual Joy-Con left and right, they're both one controller, being, y- you can use them. So you can play a two-player game with, you know, two Joy-Cons, which is essentially one controller. They have the function in them for um, movement and all that kind of, like, there's so much in them, I feel like they're, you know, a yeah, step that's up. Why the, that's why the Joy-Cons have their own individual patents. Um, yeah, Joy-Con left and Joy-Con right. It's more, I think a lot of what they're... It's more of like the actual like connecting thing and the fact that yes. the two separate controllers are connected go into to the main one tablet and it's device, uh, on the go. That's what yeah. they have in their patent. Um, Which I can see. Claiming the switch has caused and is continuing to cause damage and irreparable injury to game device when they If damaged- anyone Okay, how can it be called Okay, what I'm s- what I want to say here is like they have said that the switch has caused and is continuing to cause them damage and in irre- ir- irreparable in- injury to them, right? But the thing is is that they never launched this, so it's not competing with anything they have. I didn't know what this what thing was till they yesterday. They sell accessories for Android and phones and tablets. They that's what's their marketing. They sell accessories for, you know, my phone or your phone exactly. or our like iPads and tablets. They don't compete with a console. They never released a tablet yeah. or console to compete with it. So how can they be causing them with, damage? With the patent, the patent for Nintendo would be for a console, where this would be for mobile gaming, where it's two different things again. Yeah. Um. I just I don't. I didn't know what a wiki... Uh, that doesn't make sense, because I didn't know what a wiki pad was until I read this story. If anyone knew what this fucking thing was, I'll give them $10. I will mail you $10 if you can prove... I've never heard of the wiki pad. I've never heard of the wiki pad. It, I've never heard of I Game Vice. actually, like... Have, did the wiki pad actually release? Or I don't think it has yet. Or did they just give up on it? I think they might have given up, and I think that's why they're doing the lawsuit. Because they went, this can't compete with the Switch. But, like, it's... Uh, no, but they gave up on it years ago, and they've been focusing on peripheral game controllers. There you go. 
that's what that's the gist I'm getting from everything I've read. Yeah, I I mean what in the statement they have what they had in mind for the portable device. So they're basically saying we had this idea and it didn't take off because you brought out the switch. That's what they're claiming. So <laughs> yeah, but they they just didn't release it. That's their, exactly. That's on them. So they're saying we had this idea before you. You you're getting the success when it should be us because we thought of the idea first. So they're basically saying that it's their intellectual property, and yeah. that they want Nintendo to stop what they're doing. But that's not happening. Anyways, we should we should probably wrap this story up. <laughs> probably. It's all good. Um, we'll have. I'll try and update this next week or when I the don't know next enough episode about is. It. There's not enough information about. No, well, that's the thing. Like, none of them are commenting on it. That's all we have. But hopefully, this should wrap up this week. Cause I'm sure Nintendo will come out with something yeah. or it will get resolved. Um, so next story, we No Man's Sky is getting an update. Uh, it's getting 30 hours of new story content. I completely forgot about this game. Um, it just it just bombed. It was the first. It was an indie game, and then Sony took it on as a first party game, and went, "We'll take, we'll give you the money, we'll take care of it." They were at numerous A3 shows. There was a lot of hype around it, and then it kind of just it just didn't live up because there was nothing to do, and no one really gave a shit. But we have a new update. Uh, so we have limited online co-op called Joint Exploration, improved galactic galactic mapping and waypointing, variety and visual quality of planets improved with rare new planet types. Uh, freighters, builder resources, new missions, full galactic trading system, more in-depth scanning, overall... Imp- they're basically just doing a big update for the game. It's bas- It sounds like No Man's Sky 2.5. There's a lot more in-depth information about this. Um, ancient portals do something now. Quality of life improvements such as ship summoning and inven- uh, inventory management um, and spaceship combat improvements. There's a, a lot of list. If you go to the No Man's Sky website, they have the full list of... Uh, um, Updates. I never really play No Man's Sky. It just I watched the review and watched gameplay, and I didn't feel like just wandering around in space doing nothing. It's bas- It's basically like Minecraft, but you can't really like do anything. It'd be like Minecraft if it was sandbox mode, but you couldn't touch anything. Like Did you have? Ever- mode? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I don't want to get triggered on my own show. Um, <laughs> Did you ever fuck around with No Man's Sky, or just I don't never? Have a PS4, so no. Right, it's on PC as well. I don't want to waste my money, so no. Um, no, No Man's Sky bombed and bombed hard. It was not interesting or appealing. It kind of just fucked up in a lot of ways, and ugh, did you it ever just died did, very uh, fast? People bitched about it, and then it was gone. Like, I, did you ever find an in, if hypothetical? You you no, got to I, play I, it. I, I didn't. I wasn't even interested in demoing it. I wasn't interested in playing it at someone else's house. I looked at <laughs> gameplay of it and all everyone getting hyped about it, and I just was not interested in it. Like mm. it was never something for me. It was it was really Sony's fault for hyping that game. They gave it E three Showtime twice, and we were sort of like, we've seen this game. We're not really sure what it what we do in it though. Like what what do we do? And no one ever answered that question. That's started playing the game they're like oh they're actually they didn't know what you're supposed to do in this, this game when they were making this game this game was undercooked and since release they've added so much more stuff and it's it's sort of better now but at this point it's gone like no one it's cares too little too late yeah. they should have just made sure it was great on it was board. sony's fault for pushing it i feel like if they were indie if they just kept it themselves and and maybe they released it maybe this year Maybe then it w- might have done a bit better, but because Sony pushed it and forced it down their throats, and then obviously if I don't you're even with, think of that. I think they rushed it because remember well, Sony how many delays it got. Mm. Sony and pushed then... it, pu- pushed it. That's the thing of when you're uh, when you're, you're Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, you have deadlines, and like for their big games, they do push them back, like Last of Us, Uncharted, Halo. But like especially with this, they were like, you just have to get this game out. And they're obviously like, we're not ready, and they were like, just you have to produce this. And they did, and it was awful. They, because No Man's Sky was delayed quite a few times, if I'm not mistaken. It was, I think, um, two or three times. I think Sony underestimated how much time it would take them to build this game, because mm. you know they are. It was devs. it was Sony trying um, to get the one up in that market to go. We found this game; it's going to be exclusive to us. But they just they just bet the wrong horse, really. I. 
think Sony just kind of ruined it. I mean, it's it like... It could have been great. It's like when, um, you know, Minecraft was on Xbox first. Yeah. You know, and, and obviously, you know, we know how Minecraft did. And it's, it's sort of, it, you know, it's sort of um, the indie version of Skyrim where it's on everything. Yeah. Like, my toaster oven plays it. Like, it's just, it's, ev- you know, it's everything. Yeah. Um, but that's a new update. If you're into No Man's Sky, I want to check it out now. Um, I personally haven't played it, but that is, uh, that's what's happening with that game. Um, I can't believe I'm still reporting on it, but, uh, there, there we go. Um, next up, um, the Super Nintendo is the next, uh, console from Nintendo to get a mini treatment. We saw the mini NES last Christmas, and, uh, ooh, not Christmas, um, next month. So, is it September? It is September this time. I was right. That's why I had September on my brain. Um, and the song, September! Um, <laughs> I apologize. Um, so, Super Nintendo's, the mini version, can now be pre-ordered at Harvey Norman, which I had to read that twice because I was like, Harvey Norman? What? Is Harvey Norman a thing outside of Australia? Harvey Norman, I don't think so. Really? So, it was a bit weird, like, because obviously JB Hi-Fi, yeah, Target, EB Games. kind of always been a technology thing. Not for games, though, really. Like, no, you can still... kind of an implied thing. I you can buy a PlayStation there for, like, $600, but, like, they don't... <laughs> they don't really sell... It's like that sad game section in, like, Kmart or oh, whatever right, you yeah. see. Like, there's a couple... Of, like, it's, like, six games, and they're all, like, $100. And, but, like... Th- th- like, so getting something like this in a very specific item, I'm guessing they just went, this is going to sell really hot. We can make a quick couple hundred dollars if we can get them in let's do it i mean it's a good strategy move it's just really weird like the sentence i'm going to harvey norman to get a nintendo thing i'm just like are you stoned you okay did you mean jb hi-fi like what are you doing um but on that i mean pre-orders have sold out everywhere at jb and eb so if you still want one you might be able to get in because you know harvey norman people gamers don't go there so they would know about it and if you haven't seen the story so if if you're in australia and you want to pick one of those up I would recommend it. You get two controllers in the box. You have Super Metroid. You have Super Mario World. All the games have Super in front of it. It's it's great. You have Kirby, Yonk Donk, B- <laughs> Luigi. No one, no one gets your jokes. No Everyone love Yonk Donk. I'll tell you new Yonk Donk. If Yonk Donk in Animal Cross, you why? You need to like put videos of everything you reference in your descriptions from now on. Just record me just for myself. My new favorite meme is Goodbye Horses, which you haven't been around for, which what is probably good. What the fuck is that? Goodbye Horses. I don't know. What I know, exactly. You've been away for Goodbye Horses. The guys hate it. Like, I'll do it later and you, you everyone will sigh. It'll be great. Um, so move, moving on uh, to our next story. GameCube games, uh, are they coming to Switch? Question mark? Quotation mark? What's happening? Um, on European... It's not. It's not. Um, I imagine it will be up with the online service next year because there is a there is a deal where if you subscribe to the online service, you get a NES game for that month of yeah. your choosing. And so I feel like it will come out then. Yeah, probably. Um, but basically, on the European servers, two GameCube games were mentioned. Um, this Dolphin game and Sonic Adventure DX. Two really random games, but they showed up. Um, GameCube games on the Virtual Console have been rumoured for a while now since the Switch's conception because obviously the Switch is a more powerful device. Um, mo- you can play NES, Super Nintendo, Game Boy games, a ho- like most things. So the next logical step, you can play N64 games, you can play Wii games. So the next step would be GameCube games. There are a lot of lost games on that that uh, that console. M- uh, Mario Kart Double Dash is a great, great game. Super Smash Brothers Melee. Um, there's Star Fox. There's Metroid Prime Trilogy, which is just... Ah, uh, may- oh, well, one and two are on there. Three is on the way, but there's just there's a uh, Super Mario Sunshine. There's amazing games on that, so I'd love to play those on the Switch, sort of on the go and on my bed and and whatever, and show people who haven't played it. Like, um, I know you probably haven't played a lot of a lot of those games I just listed. Um, I might have played like one, maybe, but not legally. No, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like if if Mario Kart and Smash and that came on, you'd probably buy them just to check them out. Because I feel like Mario Kart has kind of just stayed the same over the ages. See, Double Dash, um, you know how there's, in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, you know how there's two items? Yeah. That's originally from Double Dash. Yeah, that's what I've heard. But yeah. Like, now it's on Mario Kart 8 
So what yeah. rating do I actually So have basically, to play double dash? on Double Dash, you play as two characters at once. <laughs> Each racer, you have a character at the front and a character at the back. And you can switch between the two characters, and each character has a different ultimate. So, like, Yoshi throws a big egg, Bowser throws a big shell, there's different items for each set of characters. Um, so that was the big thing about that game, and two items, and that's where Baby Cart comes from, Toad's Turnpipe, a lot of iconic maps. Um, it was just a fun game, and people say that's the best Mario Kart, because it did... It's the one Mario Kart that changed up everything, and then obviously Mario Kart Wii added motion controls, and then Mario Kart 8 was a bit the same, but... Um, you know, I, I guess the two item thing would be lost on you, but I, I, I would, I would definitely check it out if you do want, you know, difference, but I guess now it isn't different because the other Mario Karts have either added all the tracks or added those. So the only really new thing would be the character swapping, yeah. but, um, I, I would be excited to see them again. Cause uh, you know, like Mario party and like the GameCube was good. It was a very underrated console with a lot of good games on it. Like yeah. that were lost. Yeah. Um, like Melee is like probably the best Smash Brothers. Um, as I said, Metroid Prime wanted to two of the best Nintendo games ever. Really great um, first-person shooters, yeah. and and you know we haven't had a good Metroid game since. Hopefully, we're getting one on the Switch. Um, <laughs> Metroid Prime Four is confirmed, but we don't know anything about it. But so I, I thought that was some cool news. I got excited as a GameCube nostalgia fan. Um, and Pokemon Coliseum and XD, how did I forget about those? Two of the best Pokemon side games, apart from Ranger. Um, the only time we've got sort of close to Pokemon on the console was the GameCube. We got Pokemon Coliseum and XD. Uh, there were proper Pokemon battles. You could catch Pokemon. You had Shadow Lugia. It wasn't a traditional Pokemon game, but it's the closest we've got. It was battling and it was Pokemon. It added its own twists and turns, but it had a really great story. So I definitely recommend those, especially if you're into the story. If they would come to Switch, and I feel like they would, um, because I know Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow are available to download on the Virtual Store on the 3DS, and uh, Gold and Silver are coming, oh, yeah, coming in about two months, which I'm actually really excited for. I was more, I'm more excited to play Gold and Silver again. Oh, Soul Silver is game. such a good game. It's just like grinding through the Pokemon. I forgot you were playing that, man. That was a while ago. I remember you were like. Like into that. That was fun. Yeah, I I got through the game really fast. Um, I just haven't finished my catching the Pokemon I need for my life yet. Mm -hmm. No, I'm with you. So that's that's what's happening on the GameCube front of switching. So hopefully, we get an announcement eventually. That would be really great. S talking about uh, Metroid and Samus. Uh, Samus Returns comes out next mid next month, and. Really? Are you actually getting it? Yeah, yeah. And, like, not only is it a good game for, like, new pe people who are new to Metroid to get into, it's also great for old fans because it's the same Samus Returns, but they've added all this really cool, like, Eon abilities and stuff. And I just, like, I think that's really awesome because I didn't know what they'd added in and what they hadn't when they were showing it off. And I was showing it to Graham, right? And he was like, that wasn't in the game, and that wasn't in the game. Ooh, I'm excited it's, for this now. It's like, a, he went it's a from, completely like, new game. Not caring about it to suddenly being like, I'm getting this. It's a completely new game. It's like when they redo Pokemon. Like when they redid Pokemon Red and Blue to Leaf Green and Fire, like those were completely new games. It's not. It's basically like Silver and Silver yeah, yeah. Silver. And Sam, the original. Okay, so the original Samus Returns was the sequel to Metroid on the NES, and it was on the Game Boy. It was in black and white. And it, w it was a really good game, but it was kind of lost on that console. So to bring it back on the 3DS... <laughs> fuck you, Ethan. Um, oh, my God. Um, both of them now. Anyway. Yeah. Um, both, yeah. you know, bringing it to the 3DS is a great place because I feel like a lot of remakes do work on the 3DS. But the 3DS is really becoming the remake Pokemon Fire Emblem console for both those franchises and then other games. Yeah. It is really clever that, they, that it's Samus Returns because obviously... We haven't had a Metroid Samus yet. Ah! We're poking each other. Ow, it kind of hurt. You're stronger than me. Stop poking. Don't do it. I'm a strong, uh, independent woman. You don't need no man. Are you from the south? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Put that in a shirt. Can I make shirts? Is it too early? Episode two? I think it might be too early to make shirts. Comment below if you would buy a shirt. I will make it for you and send it to you but for free just so I can send a shirt. Actually, no, pay me some money, please. I'm poor. I spend all my money on my friends. You need to stop. 
No, you need more chocolate. <laughs> um, what were we talking about? <laughs> Samus, right. Samus. Um, so Sa- Samus Returns. Uh, um, I feel like we haven't... The last uh, Metroid Samus game was Other M for the Wii, which was a sort of prequel to Prime, which was just fucking awful. And it was nothing like Prime, and it was, just didn't do well. And this is it where you talk and I Sam- don't know anything Samus- about Metroid. So, yeah. Well, you will soon with Samus Returns! Yay! Is Oh my god, is that a new meme? We just came up with a meme live on air. I love it. Well, sort of live. <laughs> Pre-recorded live. With the new game coming out, of course, Nintendo are bringing out a new... This is a mouthful. A new 3DS XL. <laughs> um, basically, it's red. It has Samus's little fi- like morph ball emblem on it, and it has Samus on the front. It looks cool. Uh, I have a 3DS XL. I don't have a new 3DS XL. This kind of prompts me to get one. Do you know that Toy Story is going to be in Kingdom Hearts 3? With that in episode one, so they do know. <laughs> Toy Story is gonna be in Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> I'm fucking so listen to that. I'm gonna feel like, fuck. You're gonna love It's good. Oh, it is gonna be good. Um, so, yeah, so that's um, so Samus, uh, Samus 3DS is <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, yes, I would like to play 3DS. Oh, yes, I have a quickie. <laughs> anyway, um, it's, it's a thing. It's nice that they're bringing out actual, like, Metroid consoles and recognizing the success of Metroid after it kind of, yeah. like, bombed when it yeah. initially came out. I, I kind of wish it was a small one because I actually like your small bab one a lot better, the, the small 3S. Well, that's the thing. Because it fits in your pocket um, and whatever. That, they're actually, like, discontinuing all the plates for that because it didn't. What? The, no, because the little one didn't sell well enough. And I prefer the I little like it ones better. because it just fits in my hand more. And I love the customizability of it. You've heard it here first. Um, Bigger is not always better. <laughs> it fits in my hand. Kachiga! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, I can see the appeal and I can see why more people are interested in the, um, in the bigger ones, in the XLs. Mm. Um, and it's nice because there's all these limited edition things and it's like a good collector's item and whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, it's just, it's unfortunate because, like, it would have been cool for, like, limited edition plates to come out and yes. stuff like that. Yes, I mean, I know... It would have been cool to get, like, golden red, like, yeah. Metroids See, and See, that like usually plates. happens, like, with every, and again, with every Pokemon game, with every Fire Emblem game, like, there's a DS. I mean, Pikmin, they didn't have a game, they just brought out an Amiibo because it's, you know, Pikmin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's coming, uh, I'll, I'm tempted to get it, because I, I have a, I have the Pokemon, uh, XL that came out with Pokemon X and Y, the red one, that has both the legendaries on it, I've had that thing since 2013, and I've never let it go, um, but I feel like, I don't know, never let me go, ah! uh, <laughs> your mom's just like, the fuck are they doing, um, <laughs> but that is happening, and that is good. You're getting a charger? Oh, your credit card. No, I'm going to do this while I remember this. Story news, we have... You heard it here first, folks. Fuck her right in the fuck. <laughs> I'm using that as the intro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucking... All right, uh, so in moving to some Sony news, uh, The Last of Us 2, we know it's happening. That's about all we know about it. Uh, there's been digging some Reddit users into imagery and stuff we have seen that points to The Last of Us 2 being set in Seattle. Uh, if you want to go check this out, you can go on Reddit under The Last of Us 2 thread and you can find these images and connections. Um, that's cool. I um, don't really have anything to say about that. I think, you know, I'm just, I don't care. I would play The Last of Us if it was located on the moon. I don't care where it is. I just want Ellie. I want Joel. And I just, I need The Last of Us. Um, so that's just a little tidbit of news. I f- we're not going to see anything to Last of Us until E3 next year, probably. If that, it's going to be a teaser trailer. But that's in very early stages of development. And uh, there we go. So that's out of the news section for now. Uh, f- it's not very... We do have other stuff to talk about. But we've got, we, have, we just have our, main, our big... Our big so coming up, coming up next, we have games that have come out this week and games that are coming out next week, and then we'll be tackling the Overwatch PTR update and our review of Splatoon 2. 
So games coming out last week, we had a Hearthstone expansion, Knights of the Frozen Thorn expansion for PC and mobile. That came out on August 10th. And Mega Man Legacy Collection 2 came out for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. That came out on the 8th. Um, so Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 has already come out about... When did it come out? About a year ago? Yeah, a well, while ago. Um, I remember you got the... You imported the 3DS version for the gold Mega Man amiibo. Yes, I did. It's actually sitting on my shelf. And uh, what I do like is the game is still wrapped in plastic. <laughs> Because one, you can't you play it because it's region locked. locked. But yeah, how much did you spend on that? I honestly don't remember. <laughs> did um, you? Was it like full price for the game? So it would have been like what, fifty bucks? Yeah, it wasn't like. Look, I don't honestly didn't give a shit. You just wanted like, the amiibo. I just wanted the gold amiibo. I had the money to spend. I was like, you know, fuck it. I'm gonna make all my amiibo collector friends jealous because they can't. You have... definitely made me jealous because it's the but one I don't like have. Three people in out of all the amiibo collectors I know, there's like three people I've seen who have it. So the only one I have, like, you have a one up on a lot of me because you have all the new ones. The only one I have, like, that might one up you is I have uh, Chibi Chibi Robot. That's the only one. That one. I don't even care about though. Yeah. Well, you you made a conscious decision recently just to buy the ones you're interested in and not get the collection, which I think is where I'm at as well. Um, there's just too many goddamn spin-offs. The Animal Crossing ones are ridiculous. There's too many Zelda ones. There's too many Splatoon. Let's just. I'm. Ju- I haven't even finished Smash yet. I need two, like, oh, six more actually, because there's variants. But getting off topic. But yeah, Mega Man Collection Two is finally out, which I think is Mega Man's from I think seven upwards. And they're remastered. So if you're interested in that, go play that. Games coming out this week. We have StarCraft remastered on PC for August 14th. And the big one, we have Sonic Mania for PC, PS4, Switch, and Xbox One on the 15th. Which is, um, they're like, it's a new Sonic experience. But it's sort of remastering what were good in the old games and giving them new life. And you can play as Knuckles, Tails, and Sonic. It has new music, new stages, and it's the retro Sonic style. Um, it's only about $25 on the Switch eStore. So it's a pretty good buy just to sort of go through Sonic again. And on the go, it will be great. So I'm definitely going to purchase that one. And I'll hopefully have a review of that coming in a couple of weeks. How are you going to be getting that eventually? or What? Sonic, Sonic Mania, yeah. yeah. How do you feel about it? Um, is that the one that's... The classic one. Yeah, I'm getting that one. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be really cool because I remember playing... My first, like, proper Sonic experience was when I was in primary school and all the Sonic games had been, like, imported into, like, Flash games. And we yep. all played yep. them on there. Yeah, I remember doing that. Oh, it was just, it was so fun. And you could play as Cream and the other characters. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was always good. really, really fun and I really liked it. Um, no, I remember that. And really, I, yeah, I'd, I'd love to, like, continue with that. I feel like it's the... I love how the best step forward for the Sonic franchise is two Going steps back. back yeah. Because... Going, it, it's not even two steps back. It's, like, a thousand steps back. Yeah. Let's be real. The best Sonic game that has come out even, like, kind of recently was Sonic Generations. And that's because it had all the old stuff in mm, it as new well as old. new stuff. My, my favourite Sonic game, apart from the originals, is probably... Did you ever play Sonic Heroes? Sonic Hero is probably one of my favorite Sonic games. Basically, you play as like a, like as a team, and you basically go through this obstacle course, and it has this really great song, and it's just it's just a fun game. Like all the other games, like Sonic, where he's a werewolf, or he's a knight, or secret, like just Sonic 06, like just all these games, they're just Sonic. Just Sonic doesn't belong there. And like Mario's been able to get away with what he's done because like Mario Kart and you know even you know Mario Golf and stuff, they just kind of work because they're good. They start as, as a good X game, and then they add Mario onto it, so it gives it that name brand. But it just kind of works, whereas Sega, they kind of just go, what if Sonic could turn into a fucking mummy? Yeah. And just, it's, just, they, it's like they don't think it through. And, yeah. like, there hasn't, like, apart from... Mario, mainstream Mario games did dip for a while. Like, the, one of the launch titles for the Wii U was New Super Mario Bros. Wii U, and that was just, like, the one for Wii. Like, it was the same thing, but for Wii U, with slightly updated graphics. And they dropped the boat on that, and then they, you know, they had Super Mario Maker and stuff, but the Wii didn't really have a groundbreaking Mario game. So that's why Odyssey is even better, because it's, like, you know, just amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Sonic Mania comes out on the 15th of August. Um, it's cheap to download. Um, physical copy, I think, is only 50 bucks, um, and the collector's edition is pretty cool. 
So grab that if you want. So that's all the games of the week. Um, we get into our main topic of the week now, which is Overwatch. Um, I kind of like Overwatch. It's growing on me. Might need a bit more time to get into it. You know, I'm only level 463. But, uh, you know, George, I think you're only level 500 and something. 560. 560 something. Like, you don't know how you feel about the game. You might just, you know, kind of good. Um, so basically, there is a public test region for the game where all the updates go through there first before they come to the main game so we can test them and try them out and they can work out bugs before they make it to the real game. And we had a massive contra- uh, content drop out of nowhere about... It was ye- yeah yesterday. Yesterday it came out. Um, Overwatch got a deathmatch and team deathmatch um, mode and new map, which is based on Widow's uh, home in France. Bonjour. Which is called, it's called Chateau? Chateau, uh, I can't remember what the name is because it's not her, like, it's her maiden name. Oh, oh, I always forget her maiden name. I can't, I'm so sorry, I can't pronounce French names, I'm trash, I am, Bonjour. I'm Australian, uh, I am Australian scum, so let me, let me just try. It's Chateau, um, Gilead? No, it'll be Guyard or something like that, or um, or in the good old Australian, Guyard. Hey, junk rat. You're welcome, uh, Ollie's listeners, for uh, that one. Okay, so you, I haven't been able to play the death match or the new modes yet. You, I believe, did last I... night. Did you? Do you want to give like a brief? I was very tired when I did this. Um, so how does it, how does I, it work? On, um, so basically it's first to 20 kills wins yep. and ends the match. I think there might be a time limit as well. I'm unsure. Um, but it's basically like, so you can't group up and play this it because it's a 1v1v1v1v1v1. So it's like eight, it's eight players versus each other. The only way you can really play this with friends is either going into team deathmatch yep. Or playing it in custom game. So when you're even, so when you're or w- randomly when you're one v one v one, are you still on a team or are you fighting against those people as well? You're okay. So when it's team deathmatch, it's four v four. Okay. When it's one v one v one, everyone versus everyone. It's oh, ev- so it's, it's free for all. It's a proper deathmatch. Okay, so you're versing five, ten other twelve. No, you're versing seven other people. Seven other people. So it's um, it's yeah, it's uh, Oh wow. Yeah. That's intense. Yeah. It is. Um, it's really fun, though. Uh, I didn't really play it very seriously when I was actually queuing, because I just wanted to get a look at the map and try yeah. and find good sniper holes and stuff. But everyone kept following so me around playing, and killing playing, me, because I was like, please ignore. I just want to I just want to look around. How and everyone you, was like, nah, fuck How me. did you find the chateau? How did you like it as a map? Uh, it's so beautiful. Um, I haven't had a good chance to look properly explore it, because I've only been on there twice now. But um, Did you like the jump pads? You know. How did that play into things? Uh, it's just good for, okay, so it's really good for, like, you know, getting away, and it's great for getting to places, but it's kind of annoying, um, if you were to play Widowmaker, because people can just, no, people can jump up to the places that you might hook yourself up to, and it just kind of, like, takes away an opportunity for you to, like, snipe properly, I guess. Do you, long term, do you see yourself going into this mode, or do you think it's just like a one-off or to get arcade loot boxes? Okay, it depends on how I can adjust my skill, because I'm very much used to playing as a team player in Overwatch with all the abilities and... Well, as um, a sniper, you rely on, you know, other people to get kills and yeah, get and heals I'm, and push and the payload. I'm a healer. I'm yeah. a healer and sniper main. So you can see where, um, you know, obviously I play other characters, like... Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm. I play. I have um, over a hundred and seventy hours on Widow, and I have over a hundred and ten hours on Mercy. Um, probably more on both. I'm just trying to give a rough yeah, estimate. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, but as those characters, you're not really on the point that much, or uh, on the well, payload. Well, Mercy, like, Mercy, yeah, but, but you know, they're very much more. N- you know, trying to help your team. Yeah. Do well, Mercy their jobs. is a support character, so that makes sense. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and Widow just kind of picks off people yeah. that she can And again, you're get sniping, into. so you can't really no. you know, get close to things. Um, I do play a bit of Tracer and a bit of Soldier and Anna and very occasionally Lucio, um, but I don't really enjoy any tank characters and I don't, I, I kind of don't enjoy 
the play style of most characters. Like, I really hate Doomfist. Um, I, w- I used to really like Sombra, but I kind of, like, a lot of uh, Sombra players have developed skills that I haven't, and now I feel a bit out of place playing Sombra. Um, but yeah, I am very much, like, I can, you know, I know how to play other ways, mm. but in terms, those in terms characters have to be played in a very specific way, mm. and, um, so trying to adjust that is going to be interesting. In terms of new content coming to the game, is, you know, I mean, excluding, I guess, maps and characters, do you, is this more exciting to you than previous, you know, things that have come in? Yes and no. Um, I, it's exciting because there's more game modes, but it's kind of annoying that it's in the arcade because it can just be taken away. If there's an event or something, mm. what are they going to do? Are they just going to have that, take that away well, for yeah, like a have, month? We don't have No Limit 6v6 anymore. Like, that's exactly. just gone. So what I would like Blizzard to do is take mm. this out of arcade and make it a separate game mode have like a mm. different tab for oh quick play mode. competitive deathmatch yeah. yeah yeah and have like you know kind of how you go into the arcade menu yeah go into a deathmatch menu and choose like single or yeah. um or sorry i mean and they <laughs> give could, me a sec yeah. or team or like say there's like a new map they have like the map specific well, then, one then they down could the do bottom. competitive for it as well really yeah and then <laughs> they could do competitive deathmatch yeah. as well and that would be really interesting. What I'm getting upset about is Jeff keeps um, talking about the um, the custom game browser. And he's like, well, everything's always there. I'm like, yeah, but I don't... No, but that's, that's not only custom do. games with friends. Exactly. You can't play with random people. And if, exactly. And if, yeah, well, yes, you can if you set it to yeah. public. But then you have to rely on people joining your game. And even then... They might. They're not going to be of your skill level. People they're going to. They could be significantly better or significantly worse, and there's just no matchmaking. It's there. the wild, wild west, and like I don't go in that browser because like either you don't get a game forever, people leave, no, or people muck around. Like it's just. No. It's I, not I, the only time I ever go into there if if someone makes something really cool, like you yeah. know, some like you know those ridiculous game. Modes yeah, that head comes uh, up with. McCree only like roll on. Yeah, like that. only yeah, rolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah only yeah, rolls. That's so fun. And, um, like, that's really fun stuff. But, you know, you don't want to play that all the time. And if that's the only way you can play things like 6v6 No Limits or Deathmatch, it's just not fun because some people want to be able to access that all the time. Some people only are going to play those. Well, what what I'm upset about is that I, like, obviously the uh, recent Doomfist update and Summer Games has broken Overwatch. Like, the Australian servers were down for an afternoon. The game kept kicking people. Like, the game has just been sometimes un- an unplayable mess. Yeah. And so, and also the state of competitive right now is broken, so I'd rather they focus on the game we have than going, here's all this new stuff. Like, fix the fucking game. And I'm they sure they're working on it. Oh, because... Okay, so I know there's different departments on the Overwatch team working on different yeah. things. There's, like, a bug-fixing team, yeah. and there's a team that works on new content, and there's a team that works on maps, and there's a team that's working on the servers. You can't expect while they release new content, you can't expect another team to be at the stage, same stage as the content creating mm. team. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it's just, it's you, just you frustrating. Know, bug fixes are happening yeah. all the time. Like you know, PC get patches mm. every fucking day. Almost. Nearly uh, th- this week, there's pretty much been at least one or two patches a day because it's, it's been, just been bad. Yeah, there's a lot of bugs. And I, I make this joke: the, when Overwatch came out, it was pretty fine. And then they got it fixed. And then when Junkenstein's Revenge came out, the game broke again because they added all this new stuff. And since then, it's been in the same cycle. And they got the game good again. And then with Doomfist and that, everything's been unstable and there's been patches. And I get it, but I feel like they, every every department's playing catch up and nothing's at the same stage. They're like, oh, here's this new map. Here's competitive. Here's the bug fix. Here's this. Ca-. Like, but it's like. It's like a plate of spaghetti just fell on the floor and we're getting bits at different times. And I get that. I get, obviously I'm not a game developer, and, you know, I'm the one playing it, and, you know, I, I, I'm complaining about a game, but, you know, it's it's just, you, we spend a lot of time on this, and it's something we care a lot about, so obviously, when things are wrong, they're gonna annoy us a bit more than the average player. I haven't played competitive in, like, a month, maybe, maybe more, yeah. because there's been so many competitive related bugs that can just like fuck you up between and levers and bugs and everything and we'll we'll do another segment on competitive because i'm sure we could talk about competitive for two hours because the experiences we've had and we'll we'll Let's move not on talk about competitive right now. 
if the next season isn't good, I'm doing a fucking feature length documentary on it. Um, but anyways, but so that's that's Team Deathmatch. That's a brief Overwatch. I'll give the um, PTR description as well. Uh, in Team Deathmatch, eight players go head to head until one player scores twenty points. Players will earn one point whenever they land a final blown opponent, or lose one point whenever they die to environmental death e.g. falling off a cliff or self-inflicted damage. The scoring will be tracked in a brand new scoreboard. The first player to 20 points wins. In Team death ma- Deathmatch, two players of two teams or four players face off until one team scores 30 points. Players will earn one point for their team whenever they land the final blown opponent, will lose one point when their team, whenever they die to environmental damage, same thing, falling off a cliff, um, self-inflicted damage. If players are resurrected before they respawn, the corresponding points for their death will be deducted from the enemy team's score, which I think is really cool. So it makes Mercy a really big part of this mode for team. This scoring will be tracked in our default scoreboard. Hundred percent, because otherwise the other team will just constant res. Um, maps for this mode will be, and they basically taken like they do for one v one or the other arcade modes, they have already existing maps and alter them. So we have Hanamura, Horizon, Lunar Colony, Temple of Anubis, Volsky Industries, Dorado, Icomwell, Hollywood, King's Row, Black Forest, Cast- how do you pronounce that? Castildo? Castillido? What? No, that's not a, there's no D there. It's Castillo. It's Castillo. Um, Echo Point Antarctica yeah, wanna, and okay. Nectropolis. That's for Team Deathmatch only. The last four. Necropolis. Necropolis. All right, so that's the new new map. Yes, I did just say. The last four that I mentioned, Black Forest, Castillo, Echo Point, and Necropolis are just team match only. Uh, the other ones are all single. Castillo. Castildo. I sound like I'm saying dildo with just like extra words. Castillo. Yeah. Castillo. Don't, you don't need to get all that here. <laughs> that's my whole uh, friendship with you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> don't leave me. Um, all right, we'll get into hero buffs now. Um, one that we knew about for a little while was Junkrat. His concussion mine, he can now hold two of them, which is going to be insane. Bec- um, it's a much needed buff for Junkrat because honestly, Junkrat hasn't been seen in levels of play above gold in a long time. Like, Junkrat just disappears after a certain amount of time because he's just, his kit just isn't useful enough. His ult is too easily destroyed. It's just been not a good time for Junk in higher levels. Um, You know, there's the occasional, like, Junk main that'll get himself up to Grandmaster, but, you know, other than those. Well, because he's it's a bit of a cheese <laughs> character, so you can sort of. Cheese it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um,. Junkrat's Riptire and Concussion Mine buffs are in, like, they're a much needed buff. Um, the tire's movement speed has been increased by 30% and there's no longer a time limit when wall climbing. There's going to be so many shenanigans. It's going to be great for Junkrat. It's going to be good to see him back in the game a bit more. My friend told us you can basically get from near the start of Eichenwell to the castle gate by just jumping over walls. That's amazing. Which is insane, because imagine, like, in spawn and just going, okay, fuck it, and just driving your ult up. That'd be so fun. But I, I actually really do like this update because there's a lot of times when you use Junkrat's ult and you want to be sneaky, but you get stuck when you try and do something or you don't mm-hmm. have enough time, so you just have to play it in. But now it not only will it last longer and it can't just get sniped or one hit rocketed, you actually well, can it's be still, it can with still get it. sniped well, it still in one sniped, hit, but, but it's going to be a lot harder to do so because it's going to be a lot faster you now. You can be strategical with it now without yeah. being like, oh, I only have five seconds. Yeah. So it's going to make for Junkrat's definitely going to be involved a lot more things now yeah definitely it's going to be good to see him back in the game a bit i don't understand why arissa is getting more buffs no, I didn't understand she's this. so strong right now not only her two strongest abilities are getting buffed too her shield I know. And her, her bullet okay spread. so the big thing about arissa is that she does a ridiculous amount of damage for a tank and now, it's buffed. And now she's doing more damage so if you already have like a reinhardt and you're an arissa and set up a shield and you just stand behind both of those you can just trap them in your little goo ball and shoot and just... I, it's just insane. It's a bit ridiculous. With her shift ability so as well. Her fusion driver projectile speed has been increased by 20%. And now her barrier... Now, her barrier already is on a kind of ridiculously low cooldown to the point where she is doing more shielding than Reinhardt on, you know, yeah. on average. Um, her protective barrier has 
had her barrier increased in her barrier size is increased by 20 percent and the barrier shape has been changed to allow more coverage from enemies that are below the barrier so that means it 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 basically means that it's gonna open up and be more useful when it's placed on the payload and that's just gonna make a lot of Arisa play ridiculously easy and well, if lazy. You stand there with a shift and a barrier and just not die. Oh, it's just gonna be ridiculous. Like my, my she's my already mind. ridiculously strong. Yeah. She does not need any more strength right now. Arisa getting buffs to me just kind of seems like okay. We have this character. She's now the second newest character. To make sure she doesn't get overshadowed, let's make her ridiculous. She's strong. the opposite to Anna. They just nerf her into oblivion and just buff Anna's her. Anna's still getting used, though. Oh, yeah, because, you know, she's she's useful. And Sombra's finally coming into her own. Like, people are yeah. finally seeing use in Sombra. Yeah, um, well, yeah I, my, my thing is that her Orisa's barrier already fits most chokes, like Valskaya or Iconwell. Like, it fits that gap. So now it's just going to overextend. And nothing's going to come in edgewise. Uh, I just, it's frustrating because, like, it's making it better for Orisa and her team She's to fit in a barrier, Reinhardt. right? But playing around Reinhardt and Orisa, it, part of it is, you know, making sure you call out when the shields are going down and making sure you communicate when, um, you know, well, imagine her the shield is match. going up. And then making sure you are staying behind the shield. That's not you, That's your responsibility. Yeah. The shield doesn't have to get bigger so you can fit. You need to position yourself better. And they've just made it kind of ridiculous. Like, if she doesn't get... Like, she's going to create a bit of a different meta. Well, between and Junkrat, now, Arisa, Doomfist, like, next season is going to be insane. And like I was saying... Like this death, season's going to change right well, now. Well, your dive meta is gone now. <laughs> like, that's going to go. Um, I mean, no, because Winston and Diva are still quite strong against Arisa. And I'm happy Winston's finally coming to his own, because Winston was this character where... He just kind of didn't fit a use. They extended his jump. I've always played him because I find him fun. I think... But now he's finally there. What, because what there, the tanks are gone. Yeah, so... Orisa's buffs are not going to get rid of Dive Meta because Winston is still the anti-barrier hero. Like, he, he just... Go through, yeah. he, his weapon just goes straight through it, right? Yeah. If he puts a bubble down and stays on one side of the bubble and just kind of moves in and out of it as Orisa does and just uses his Tesla cannon... Orisa's fucked. Well, that's why she has a shift. Yeah, that, but, like, know, that that's only yeah. on there for a certain amount of time. And by that yeah. time, you know, you'd hope that your diva or yeah. your DPS had gotten there to help you out. Hey. But yeah, I I mean, the developer comment is the projectile speed increases, helps Orisa's consistency, especially at medium range or further. Her barrier size is increased to better protect her team, and the new shape makes her shield more efficient when it's used on slopes or top objects, such as payloads. But as you were saying, like... The, it's the people's, you know, thing to get behind the shield. Like, I don't... It doesn't make and any her, sense. Her cooldown is on... A, okay. Her shield is on a small enough cooldown to make the fact that it's on a move... Like, it has to be put before a payload mm. kind of irrelevant. It'd be like Does saying, that make sense? Yeah. Like, the cooldown is short enough for you to, like, fight continue moving forward and by the time you're past the barrier you'll have another barrier ready to go the thing, the thing is like it'd be like being like oh hondo's ult does too much and people don't know how to get out of the way of it so we're just going to give everyone like 20 percent more shield so they can do with hanzo it's like i don't that's not how things work but that's how they're treating it but i don't know we'll see how it is it's definitely going to be overpowered uh, if you're a Rissa main, you're probably overjoyed right now i've played i play i actually have some solid hours on her because she was the first hero that appealed to me because I didn't I don't really play healers or snipers I Sombra was sort of eh Doomfist my my friend's taken scene <laughs> um but it, you know it's alright so next up um, yeah I do kind of agree with the projectile speed though because um when I was trying out Orisa trying to get consistent damage on people I don't really like projectile characters I play I use Mercy's gun when I have to and I've gotten okay at that but, you know, ev- I don't like projectile characters because every projectile speed is different. And trying to do consistent damage with Orisa was really, really difficult with the project- current projectile speed. Well, it's speed. like D.Va, so she's slow when she walks. Like, every character has their own it's, thing. Yeah. I, I think that in itself is um, a good change. I just think the shield changes are so unnecessary. She's already doing so much more shielding and so much more 
she's just more effective than Reinhardt right now. And if they keep buffing her shielding, he's just going to disappear from the game. Like, no matter how much you buff Reinhardt, if someone shields better than Reinhardt, there's no point to well, have Yeah, like, Reinhardt. if there's an Orisa on the team, our people are like, we don't need a rain because we have a shield. Why a do we rain? need a rain? Did you rain? say a rain? It's been raining. Um, yeah, I don't, like, I, I agree with you. So he's going to be. I mean, remember when Reinhardt was, like, the, you know, let's do this? Yeah. And now he it, was like he was once like he necessary. was always the, he was always called out like we need a, we need the heart we need him yeah all right so that's that's Arissa we'll see how that shapes up the next hero getting a getting a little buff is Roadhog which has been a great topic of discussion in the Overwatch community I'm, okay salty Roadhog mains shut the fuck up <laughs> no seriously Roadhog was never meant to be a DPS his one shot getting nerfed was meant to happen. But I can't kill people now. You can still kill people. Oh, you just need to ball. be smarter about it and stop going off on crusades by yourself. You have to use your team and soak up damage like the tank you are. Understand? Like, you He's have, a tank. You can get all your most. You can get all your health back with with his healing. Yeah. That's the thing. And now, take a breather has been buffed, and it's an amazing buff. Right. Roadhog mains. He can now take a breather, can be used while moving. That's nice, isn't it? So you can, like, not get in that spot where you're And then you're not just going to have, like, even the worst Widowmaker on the world in the world picking you off with headshots because you're standing still. And you're healing. You know. While you're working your lane. And now the damage taken while you heal has been reduced by 50%. That's insane. The only thing I... Th that's like... No, that's like the equivalent of Arissa's... Um, I can't remember what the ability's called. I don't play the enough shift Arisa. ability. Y the one where she takes less damage. Is that the shift ability? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it I is. I don't play enough of her. Yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, that ability, it's the same thing. You could literally just use take a breather for like two, three seconds to s just to take less damage. Yeah, as a defense mechanism. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, you can use it during ult. This makes him a way more viable tank, and he's already the tank with the most health in well, the game. I feel like the only person that will be able to take him out now is really Reaper, because he'll be able to output enough damage with a headshot to do that. Yeah. He's the only guy. Everyone, like, like Soldier, like, he can pump into him, but unless he gets yeah. his rockets off and then damage and then you know, can yeah. get him after the breather, he's going to just be this... You know, even, like, oh. McCree's and Widowmaker's landing consistent headshots mm. are still going to, like, not be able to take him out. Because instead of th Widow's 300 damage, she's doing 150 because it's, you know, 50% of damage. And he gets and that back within seconds. He's got 600 health. You know? <sighs> it's a very good buff, and people complaining that it's not enough what are you doing? Do you Have you seriously not adjusted to Roadhog yet? Do you think this was planned, or do you think this is in response to all the hate? Do you think we I genuinely fine? think that they think that they fucked up with Roadhog's one shot. I think they looked at the hook and went, we've made a DPS and not a tank. Well, Roadhog... A DPS with 600 health, and then they nerfed his damage, so then the, he would be more tank-like. And then they realised... He's not tanky enough. So now they've made him more tanky. He is fulfilling the role that he was designed to fill now. His hook only got fixed a month ago. Exactly. And, you know. Um, and, sorry. It's okay. Um, look. Roadhog's hook is still an incredible ability. You just need to, like, communicate more with your team now. Well, no, people are just angry because they used to be able to get people, th like, through walls what? and stuff and win one shot. So not only did you get a bullshit no hook... One, no, look, no one cares that, like, bullshit hook has been fixed. Everyone is kind of like, yeah, that's fair. Even Roadhog mains who, like, used to rely on that are like, And I'm yeah, amazed it took fair. so long to fix. Um, it's because it was they had to completely redesign <laughs> the way the hook worked because it used to be calibrated off of, um... Oh, it used to be worked out off of, like, something ridiculous. Like, it, it, I can't remember which one it is. It either used to be worked off of where Roadhog was hand, like, uh, where the hook could see and then hooked like that and now works off where Roadhog is or vice versa. Mm. I can't remember which is which, but, yeah, you no, know. Yeah, no, that's fine. But, like, any time, like, if the character moves or goes behind something, yeah, the hook breaks. And, exactly. Like, it works a lot better. Um... um Hook just, like, if you used to use the, like, hook shot melee combo or whatever, 
and you're upset that you can no longer one shot people good. like communicate with your team yeah. that's literally all you have to do S- like when you get some when you see someone out of position and decide to hook them give a scream focus this person i'm hooking them in and then everyone will turn demolish yeah. that person and then continue shooting like mm. it's not that hard to communicate and get all your team to like you know um what's the word communicate work together no what uh it's like benefit off the hook <laughs> what it what the hook does <laughs> no it's like you, you know what i'm talking about i'm sure the the word will probably come to me like an hour after i finish like, this and i'll me. be like ollie fuck! edit in post um you know I, like, I swear, it's, like, in my head. It. To, um, capitalise off of the hook, you know? Yeah. Um, it's not that hard to get make the hook work, honestly. Mm-hmm. Just, like, be more clever and more teamwork-oriented rather than going off on Kill Crusades and trying to do it by yourself. You, you just need, need to be more team-reliant now. The only other example I can think about this is when Bastion got his latest buff on the PTR yeah. and he had all his armor and his ult and all this and he did more damage and like I think a day went past and Blizzard got swamped with this can't happen Bastion's already OP and they completely changed him and so you know his ult now he doesn't have armor and they got rid of his damage a little bit slightly but they yeah. kept the changes with self healing and stuff but that's the only other time I can heal him but I feel bad that you know they sort of obviously game developers should listen to their fans, but I feel like they're getting bullied into doing things that they're they, not you know. like because here they're clearly this isn't them going back on their nerf though. No, this they, is them. They, found a they are not. They have already said they're not bringing back the old hook. No, they're keeping this because this is like Roadhog is not a DPS. If he was a DPS, he would be in the attack or defense category. He's a tank, category. and now he will. Tank. He's a d- he's a tank and now he's more efficient at being a tank he's he is the way he's meant to be now and i like once these buffs go live i think roadhog should be left alone probably because unless there's like some game breaking bug to do with it mm. i think this is like the final change mm. that well, should this, happen this to will him. this will segue on to the next uh, character that got buffed but a lot of the characters that are getting buffed lately are the characters that don't really need them or characters that I just didn't think would be like Junkrat getting buffed is cool and the tire I agree with but I didn't think he'd get two concussion mines I didn't think he'd get these buffs like I was like oh like in terms of characters I'm like Junkrat works fine Arissa like there's other characters that are just like oh but they're not one of them but the last character that is getting a buff is a character dear to your heart I think do you like Widowmaker uh, oh, I Georgia I, I don't know well um because well, my, let me actually like check how many sure. hours I have on Widowmaker and okay. Can I I'll play a game? Of how many f- requests to play you're gonna get in the minute that you're gonna be on? Oh my god! Don't even. Who's <laughs> actually online? Okay, there's like no one on. It's okay, fine. Good. The only person I might like if Mitch goes on. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so Widow is finally getting a buff, and that's been needed okay. for a long time. And the only okay. character that's been neglected. Widow has been neglected because people. I feel like the dev team are very afraid to touch her because if they touch things in the wrong way, it's very easy to make her overpowered in the right hands. Widowmaker is very strong if you can aim. That's the facts. Well, that's the right? one thing with with this update. People have been like, "Yeah, that makes sense." Like that's she has the longest cooldown in the game. Okay, for something <laughs> that she needs. Twelve seconds on the grapple cool. <sighs> was ridiculous um it was impossible to get away and you need to and like the grapple was you designed not just to get up to things you know it was also designed to get away from things and they say that right i've got 165 hours sorry i overestimated my widow hours goes from 165 widow mercy 107 and then 51 in fifa (laughs) then least played who's your least played still reaper on zero i think oh my god yeah, under he's a under minute. Under, uh, Doomfist is less than Reaper. I've got under a minute on both Five Reaper. On Roadhog. I hate Roadhog. Roadhog. Ten on Hanzo, fifteen on Orisa, sixteen Junkrat, twenty-seven on you Zen. Have seven hours on May. 
Yeah, th- I went through a phase of playing a lot of May. And then we met Fan. Oh. And then Ethan took Farron. Ethan took, took, took Farron! <laughs> I hate when Ethan <laughs> still locks Farron. Oh sucks. man, I hate it. Farron's my favorite character. Um, our friend Ethan is a May Symmetra and now Doomfist yeah, main. Yeah, fuck, I'm so glad he started playing Doomfist because now I can play Symmetra again. Uh, I I play a lot of this game. I've got a four hundred and the four hundred and fifty three hours played. I think I'm like through. I'm like three eighty. I can check. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Ooh. Friend on the game thing. I think Symmetra is one of the you. You. This is you. Yeah. Uh, you have. Oh, well, that's the current competitive season. It's too many. 395 hours. Alright, so you got like 100 hours more. Oh, my most characters still Diva at 73. Yeah. And then Symmetra at 41. That is why I have Golden Guns for Diva. Uh, and all my all my hero times are consistent, though. Like, it's like 50 hours and 30 hours, 30 hours, 30 hours. Yeah, so I'm about 70 hours off on you. Yeah, that's fair. You did get the game a little bit before me, too. Yeah. Um. <sighs> Being back in the field. Okay. So, you know, I play a shitload of Widowmaker. I really enjoy her. I find, you know, killing people with her incredibly satisfying. Um, let's make sure that didn't stop you from that. Okay, no, no it didn't. Good. Um, <laughs> I find playing her very, very satisfying and very rewarding. It's really fun when you have a good game and you just decimate. It's very, I very you fun. In my sights. Um... But her abilities have always been very overwhel- underwhelming. Not overwhelming, underwhelming. Their, her grapple had way too long of a cooldown and was useless well, when you thing, needed it. Her main thing is getting up to high places and sniping. With the cooldown that much, when a Winston comes in your face or a D.Va or, you know, anything, it just you're just left because you can't do anything. Yeah. And it's just a, ridic- and it's just a ridiculous And then they're trying to, like, get away from someone and get health and then you can't get back up. For like another 10 seconds so you're grounded for a long time and inefficient for a long time you know um just even the four second cooldown makes it so much better um okay let's get on to venom mine which has been argued as one of the worst abilities well you were game. saying like i just want them to change it like just do something else because it just doesn't I, like do a lot of people just wanted to get rid of the venom mine and just put something else in its place because it was just kind of useless because once it activated you knew someone was there but they might have gone the opposite direction or they might have just you know and it doesn't do that much damage it does 75 damage gradually and if you get a health pack or if tracer recalls that's completely nullified because it's like the poison stops affecting you once you get a health pack um and then mercy or Anna can just heal you through it um because it's very very gradual like mercy can e very like literally the second the one the damage just gets get taken it, it just yeah. immediately goes back up but venom mine now has actual use isn't hey. that amazing yeah. um effective targets are now visible through walls only to widowmaker though and that's amazing it means that flankers that get hit by venom mine you can see where they are for a couple seconds and it means that widowmaker's venom mine ability is a little more up to par to um Hanzo Sonic. Now it doesn't last anywhere near as long as Hanzo Sonic Arrow does. It only it lasts very little amount of time, but it lasts long enough for you to know where the enemy is and what direction they're heading in, um, and give you a good idea of where you should be aiming for whoever's approaching you. Have you had much experience with the new Widow yet? I have like only gotten to test it very for a very small amount of time did it instantly um, feel better to you though like did you did it, it, it did you wow like okay the venom mine change did because i throw out a lot of venom mines and being able to like see who's affected by that was really really good for me um it's also nice that it's not i think it's a good thing that it's not a whole team thing so it's, it's basically um, a small version of your ult yes and no because the ult a lasts much longer b yeah is everyone, everyone on the enemy team. team and C apply the ult applies to your entire team. This is just for you. Even Hanzo Sonic Hour arrow shows for the you know yeah. the entirety of your team. I'm just saying in terms of like, you know, if you're still waiting for your ult, if you don't want to use it straight out, you can you know, you can have that thing of getting you know, seeing where someone is a bit easier. 
Yeah. Like, if there's just, like, one person alive and you think you know where they're coming from and you yeah. throw down a venom mine, that's a way that more effective... Shot, yeah, then it's a like, way oh. more effective way of doing it. Because yeah. um, you don't want to throw out your ult if everyone's no. dead. That's no. It's, no. like, it's... It's very bad because that's like, like that's like character. it's the only way you can waste Widow's ult is when everyone is already dead and you're waiting for them to a come back from spawn or just respawn. It's the only way you can really waste Widow's ult. Otherwise, you just kind of chuck you, it out there and I, help everyone what I out. W- what I will ask you is, do you feel um, her assault, her gun when she's using that um, her assault rifle? Her assault rifle. Do you feel like? That isn't a good play. Should it be more powerful? Should no, it be more damage? Do, do not feel... touch that fucking rifle. <laughs> okay? It's not underpowered and it's not overpowered. It allows you to, if you are accurate enough and not panicking enough, to mm. take out someone who jumps onto you. But it's not overpowered in the sense that someone who maneuvers correctly can't easily take mm. you out. It's not so powerful that you're not going to take someone out who's designed to take you, you out. out. Yeah. It's... The assault rifle and her sniper rifle are in great places. Just so don't, don't judgment. touch the gun. Her damage is fine. Her output is fine. And if she gets any buffs or nerfs in regards to that, she's either going to disappear or come back to the overpowered state she was when the game first yeah. released. So what what this is good about is that they addressed a hero that did need a, a, a buff, and they've done it in a way. And, and this is why I got you to come on the show and talk about it because obviously you're the widow player. I. I'm not I'm I'm not good with her. I do not play her. Um so I can't really talk about it, but it seems like she they've they've really thought about this and put things in place and they've they've fixed a character that needed it. I mean, mm. we talked about some buffs before and they here and there and and parts they do work and especially with the research like why, but it and the developer comments are pretty much what you were touching on like Widowmaker is extremely powerful in the right hands, but abilities often feel a little weak. So it's coming down to, if you know how to play, you can do damage and things, but if not, like, it's harder. But, you know, they said, you said the grappling hook cooldown reduce means it's more likely to have available when you need to escape. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? So they really have thought about what a Widow player is, what their role is, how they play on a, you know, on a pro level and a normal level. I really want to see how, like, the top level players are going to play. Like, I really want to see how... The widow players on the South Korean team are gonna mm. use her with the buffs when they come in, mm. and I really want to see how really amazing top five hundred widows like Kefri are gonna use her now yeah. that this buff is in place. Because Kefri and a lot of other Widowmaker players, they often, while they put the venom mine down, they'll often just leave it alone. Yeah, because well, it's a use. It was kind of a useless ability. Like even when you knew someone was coming, it was kind of like they could just turn around and go the other way. Well, I know you've you've never you've never really used Widow competitive because if you play her, people do that whole Hanzo like th- like thing of oh you're a snob blah blah and you get shit. So you like even though you're a good Widow player and like sometimes I'd rather you play Widow <laughs> than other things because I know you're good like and I know I'd rather have you there. Um, but obviously it's hard to But with her buff and maybe her getting things do you think that maybe she could come into a competitive meta or be used more um i don't know if that's possible with dive um just because oh the win yeah the winstons and the divas winston diva tracer genji those are widows (laughs) like main counters and they're all incredibly strong and competitive right now like even if with her like massive buff like this isn't a massive buff it's just a very useful buff with this buff, even though she's more useful, without like perfect aim, it, she's still just going to get decimated, and she's still going to get shot on for being yeah. picked. Well, with with I mean, with the buff to Arissa, especially, I feel like because usually in competitive there is a character of the shield. Usually there is Ryan Hat. Sometimes it is Arissa because people have taken to Arissa. I mean, obviously I play in a different. I am in a bronze silver rank, so obviously it's a bit different for me. But I feel like Arissa could really be used there. Um, and with Doomfist, if, I mean, there is a hype about Doomfist, but all the competitive games I've played, 9 out of 10 times, there is a Doomfist. Um, I haven't played Do- I ha- Doom. Doom. I, I haven't, haven't played, played Doom. competitive since before Doomfist came out. Yeah. But it, it will be very interesting to see what the next Season 5? Yeah. What Season 5 is going to look like in terms of... Are we on season five? I don't. If we're either on season, season are we up to? I'm an old woman with no memory. We're on season season five, so season season six is the next season. Oh, we're on season five. Yeah. Holy shit! Time flies. Season 
Jesus. Fucking hell. I'm Throw not... back to when I was a silver. Throw back to when I fucking had a soul. Um, <laughs> I... To the hill. Memories. Um... But yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how all this shapes into current meta, new meta. But it's definitely going to shake up the game. A lot of stuff in the last two weeks, like we've got Doomfist and Summer Games is on right now. And we've got new modes. And basically, like last year at BlizzCon, they said, no team deathmatch. It doesn't work in Overwatch. But as Jeff explained in the update, um, Arcade has opened up all these realms for different game modes. So, I mean, in Blizz... It's just unfortunate that... It's they... stuck in that. Like... Yeah, it's just unfortunate that... I understand that that with like the servers and the current player base, it's going to be very hard to merge people into battles if there's very all these so. different modes. But with something like deathmatch, I think it needs to be. <laughs> I have dropped so far. I was like two four something I in Lucio. I can't ball. play with competitive you. Lucio ball, guys. Let's talk about competitive Lucio ball. I'd rather kill myself. <laughs> Like that get I only the played meta for competitive I, I was getting carried by Ollie and you. Like, let's be real. That's the only so way funny. I won any of those games. I still haven't been ranked, though. Um, I mean, with competitive Lucid Ball and this deathmatch, anything is possible in Overwatch. And BlizzCon yeah. is slowly coming up yeah. in a couple of months. So I'm wondering what they're going to pull out for that. Obviously, I, they're going to get a new yeah. character. Yeah. Um, my I'm big a, thing is that they need to put deathmatch on its own little thing. They need to have quick play, deathmatch... Uh, arcade, competitive, and then game browser. That's what I think they need. Everything to doesn't need. I don't like how they're using arcade because for this, like locker box of here's everything else. Yeah, because that's the thing. They swap things in and out all the time. Like I understand with modes like Mystery Heroes and No Limits and the Lockout Elimination yeah. and Total Mayhem, but I guess like the main issue is like half of the the modes people actually enjoy playing disappear when an event happens because you know there's Lucy right now there's for Lucy example Ball. there's Lucio Ball. And Comp Lucio. Comp Lucio Ball. Compa Lucio Ball. Compa. <laughs> Lucio Ball. Um, and the problem with that is that the other modes currently present are 3v3 Lockout, 6v6 Mystery Heroes, and 6v6 Total Mayhem. So what's missing is the other 3v3, uh, the 1v1s, all, six both six kinds yeah. of... 6v6 No Limits. 6v6 Low Limits, 6v6 Lockout. There's a lot of modes that are usually in the rotation that are currently just not there well, because like, Lucio Ball is and present. And Capture the Flag and took over. And Capture the Flag and there's a bunch of other stuff. Um, and I know they rotate them constantly to try and keep it fresh and, you know, have different variants. It hasn't been fresh for a while. Uh, they just want to, like, you know, have give the mo yeah. every mode its own chance so then they can have all these modes going at the same time. I but at the same time... They're not like I, overloading, I so the, feel like the 60, player base isn't stretched too thin. I feel like 66 No Limits sort of should be its own thing, like how there's quick play and competitive. Because there are times where uh, I do want to with deathmatch now. I don't think it should be. Yeah, I mean if that's I the feel case, like death no. Match needs but I feel to take like I feel like it should, I, in its own I feel thing. like it should be a staple in arcade because mm -hmm. it what it's what Overwatch started on. And sometimes I get a bit tired. I have have a bad day. I want to play a game where we're all mercies because mm -hmm. fuck it. You know? Yeah, exactly. And, like, people say, go to the game browser. I'm just like, no, I just want to play normal Overwatch but have a bit of fun. Yeah. And, you know, so I feel like a lot of people have been upset about that. So I'm hoping that's what they're looking to do. My thing that I do want, and I talked about earlier, is that I do want competitive fix. I feel like that's the BlizzCon announcement I want. Because we've got all these new maps and other things. So I'm, as I said, I'm sure they're working on it. They do they have are. a team. But they, 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 need, they need to fix this. Between levers, between throwers between the SR itself, between placement mashes, between golden weapons, and it's just... I'm, I'm going to rip my hair out. Like, we'll just, we'll I, talk about competitive. And this will be, fight. as I said, this will definitely be a separate podcast for us. Um, but, yeah, but that's the state of Overwatch right yeah, now. The so, interesting thing. Yeah, I, I really think that Deathmatch needs its own little, like, tab. I agree um, with you. Like, just and because, gonna like, get too I think it's going... A... The arcade rotation is going to get too crowded and people are going to get pissy when it's but not available. But then you think isn't coming up. And B, um, Deathmatch, I think, is going to become a staple mode. It's going to become a big mode because it's everyone in, you know, it's like classic in, you know, big shooter games like Call of Duty, Titan Halo, Ball, Titanfall, Baton, you know, everything has... has a deathmatch. And it's a staple, like, whether single mode, too. Whether that's team deathmatch or single 
play a death match, right? It's also it's and also the first time on Overwatch where you can play by yourself and not be in a team because usually most yeah. of Overwatch is teamwork. This other is than the one v one. Other than one v one, it's the first time where it's like you're on your own go and that's why people are happy because like finally like i can just yeah. go in and show off my skills but then the other good thing exactly. about that is if, if you do poorly there's no one to blame exactly. it's on it's, you. It's you so it's a good thing of like they can't call you out they can't call it's like no like exactly it's you um it's like it's really good and it yeah it's just going to become a very popular and very much a staple game mode in overwatch and i think after you know they have a rotation of it and see how many people out. play it yeah uh they put it in they're gonna have it in for a while because it'll be the new thing yeah just like the lockout thing yeah, but yeah no yeah. one really cares no lockout. nope everyone liked 3v3 and 1v1 like better when it wasn't lockout yep same lockout um, was just like let me play my heroes but yeah Look, deathmatch is just going to become a big thing, and people are going to complain when it's gone, and they're going to eventually have to add it in. Yeah, and I mean, I sound like I'm a bit ungrateful for the game we do have, but like, I like Overwatch is just over a year old, and in a year we've got four new characters, four new maps, which is the arcade. Good yeah, like it's 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 still like, this game is still young, but we've got so much content. Like, I can't like. I can't wait to like look back and when we have like all this stuff and be like, holy shit! Like, remember when there was just remember when Quick Play you could go all Torbjorn? Yeah, like it's, and even like the beta, like Bastion had a fucking shield in front of him. Like this yeah. game has come. Remember when Torbjorn had a third stage of his turret? Like this game's come a long way. Yeah. So you know, I can't wait for BlizzCon to see how this progresses. But we have a lot of new stuff at the moment. Some of the games is happening. Uh, we got loose air ball. We PTR's got buffs, so we've got a lot of good stuff coming. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays into when they do come to the real game. What stays, what goes, what meta's like. But yeah, yeah. exciting times for Overwatch. Yeah, very much so. Um, I'm keen to see what the future brings. Um, I just hope that they implement deathmatch separately and you know do their own. Well, hopefully that's do it right. Announcement. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I'd like. I'd like them to do it right because the reason that they said they didn't want to bring in Deathmatch was because it was so different to Quick Play and they're competitive and, and how the game works, right? Yeah. Now they have um, arcade. But now, we, now they have the arcade and can just chuck in whatever yeah. game modes they want. But this game mode is going to be so big and so uh, well played Again, that it's going to need its own little yeah. like thing. It can't stay in the yeah. arcade. I'm just worried that the arcade's going to become this shoebox of just their whatever ideas. Not that they're not fleshed out, but that, I just, it's like a cop-out kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. Keep going with that rant, I need it. And <laughs> when I talk about Splatoon and rant about Splatfests. <laughs> All right, that wraps it up for the second episode of the All Over Reviews podcast. I had my very lovely, dear to my heart, special guest, Georgia. Thank you for joining me. No problem. Happy to be here and rant about Widowmaker. <laughs> Pokemon for 45 minutes. <laughs> um, um... Half an hour of this will get cut out anyway, so we're good. Um, we will have another video coming up where we review Splatoon 2, as Georgia just said. We will be talking about the game, the story mode, Splatfest, and what we do and don't like about the game. So stay tuned yeah. for that video. And, you know, whatever other gaming news pops up between now and then. I whatever, guess. whatever happens. And um, we'll definitely come back with a talk about competitive sometime in the near future. Um, until that needs its own, <laughs> needs its own video. Um, but until then, thanks for listening. Until next time, stay fresh. Stay fresh.